Okay, I think we are live and ready to go. Let me double check. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, it looks like we're good. Except I think the resolution is a little off on the stream, so let me see if I can fix that. an entire let's get that into view fast everybody I just need to get the screen positioning right YouTube it's not always the easiest to work with on things like this why don't I see Settings, output. Oh, I'm going to have to. All right, what that figure? Big enough. All right, let's stop streaming. See if I can configure the streaming tool to fix this and then once that's working correctly I'll start streaming again. Okay. There we go. I think we're set. Let me just make sure that Okay, I think we're ready to go.
Okay. Should uh, have the chat open. Hey, everybody. Just going to take a couple minutes, let people join before we get started. This is all large enough for everybody to be able to read. And once I get going, I'll basically narrate everything I'm trying to do so that it is actually uh, a little bit interesting to hear and watch. Let me know if I'm a little too quiet. Okay, five people here, that sounds good enough to me. So, one of the things that is currently lacking right now with, uh, one of the things currently lacking with Beaker is that it does not maintain the position on the page whenever you uh, refresh the page or if you go um, back or forward. And I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to get that added. We're going to find out just how far I can push Electron. Uh, but I do know that it has been driving me nuts that it doesn't work. It's really a problem if you're doing uh, live reloading, which is a really nice feature to have. But every time it refreshes the page, it's going to lose your position in the scroll, and that's obviously no good. So let's start by setting up a site that I can uh, debug this with. I'll just go with the template here. Thanks, Michael, and we will see. Who knows if we can solve this. Um, all right, I'll call this my page scroll demo. And we'll put a bomb icon on this because this may blow up on me. We'll set a directory. Cool, we're all set there. Now let's copy the path and open it up in Sublime. And I'm just trying to set up a website that I can work off of so that whenever we have the live reload going, we have something to look at. So let's do something like this. Let's say uh, for bar i0, i less than 10,000 i plus plus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just set up this um, document so that it has uh, a bunch of numbers scrolling down so I can kind of keep track of where we're at. So actually, uh, there's probably a smarter way to do this, but I'm just going to do it like this. Um, and what do we get? We get a really bad load time. That's unusual. I think causing this. Let's turn off the live reloading first. Now oh, it killed the page. Why would that have happened? Is that so egregious? Must have been. seems to be unhappy about this. So let's just completely comment it out and see if I can't figure out why. 
speaker is just broken on me. Okay, so something about what I was just doing was making it upset. 185 is 10,000 iterations. There's no reason that should have been a problem, but let's find out what happens if I just run that. It's not getting synced. Something going wrong here. Let's see, script.js. Maybe it is getting synced and just, yeah, okay, no, that's just, so it is getting synced. Let's just see what happens if I console.log from inside of this uh, loop. Really should not be a problem to. What the heck? I wonder if my machine is under some kind of strain on account of the live stream. That's unusual. Let me check my activity monitor real fast and close this tab before I die. Oh, wow. Huh. You know, I run with a pretty old MacBook Air, which it's not impossible that I'm pegging the... No, it doesn't look right, though. It's really unusual. Huh. Let's run the process again. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting a lot of CPU usage from my live streaming tool, so that might be what's going on. We are streaming at a pretty high resolution. If that's the problem, I may have to stop streaming for half a second and then... Uh, reconfigure it so that it's not sucking up so much CPU usage, but it's pretty incredible that it would be causing a loop that iterates just 10,000 times to be failing. Well, let's see what happens if I can get 10 iterations through and then we'll just work our way up. Anything else I could close? I guess I could knock out iTunes. Hmm. This is really killing my device. If anybody wants to donate a uh, modern MacBook Pro, one with a good keyboard, I can get you my address later. Is it a hundred thousand IE five? Well, now I gotta check that. How are we doing? CPU load is still high. As long as the memory pressure isn't too bad, this shouldn't be just a total nightmare. Pretty sure this is a 4 core. Let's take a look. Oh, you're right. Wow. Huh. Okay. 100,000. Boy, I better go back and look at some of the old code I've written because that. Looks like I have things off by, let me think, four. Yeah, I guess that is 100,000. Okay. So we can handle 10 iterations just fine. Let's ramp it up to 100. Whoa, what is, that is odd. Yeah. Oh, well, we have a real performance problem. I'm guessing this is the live stream. So let's just see if I can power through this. Uh, but if it ends up holding me up any worse, then I'm going to have to try to reconfigure the stream. And let's jump over to here and see if it even runs. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, Wes. We'll catch you on the next one. Okay, so here we go, at least we're that far. Let's stick it at 38. Now, if I hit the refresh button, we're going to see, of course, it's going to go back to zero. That's a real pain. So let's see if we can find a way to retain the scroll position. So I guess the first thing that comes to my mind is that I want to watch for the page unload event and try to use that as the moment to capture the current scroll position, store that in memory somewhere. Uh, and then if I can um, 
I, I suppose what I'll do is for now just try to get refresh actions working and then we can see about back and forward because if we're going to have back and forward scroll positions then we need to have some kind of um, history that we're retaining and that's a little bit more work. Let's just find out if the mechanics are even possible first. So to do that, we're all done here. This is the sort of tab management script right here under the show window, so the pages.js. This is what ends up controlling everything, every, every sort of um, UI element and behavior around the individual tabs. This is pages.js inside of the shell window folder inside of uh, Beaker. And so we have, um, whenever a page is created, we have all these events registered that are uh, electron emitted events. And so we probably are going to want to listen to load commit or possibly, let's take a look real quick at the documentation of uh, Electron and see what our options are here. Probably load commit because load commit says, um, is basically saying we've committed to starting a, uh, a new page load, uh, if I remember correctly. And so if we, um, so if we listen to that, we can take that moment to try to grab the current pages uh, scroll position and retain it. And I guess we only want to know if we have a refresh event. And so let's find out if there's something that's nicely attuned for that. Uh, Michael is correctly pointing out that it would be faster to have uh, document.create element um, and then have an append chi child call instead of basically feeding the inner HTML because I'm just concatenating the string that probably has a number of behind the scenes reallocations and then I'm forcing the browser to parse the HTML when I use inner HTML. But honestly, we're talking about like if my computer wasn't under a huge load from the streaming software, there's no way that what that page, is, that page code that I wrote is doing should be a problem. It's really all a matter of um, my computer straining under this streaming code. All right, uh, what was I doing? Okay, event. Did finish load, fail load, did, uh, okay, we got did start loading. That's one option to look at. Let's take a look at load commit and see. There's also will navigate might be one to look at, but that's kind of specific. If I remember right, let's see, we got will prevent unload. find load commit. Uh, now, um, Michael, you're right, that is better. Uh, just probably not better enough to solve this problem. I think our problem is more with my computer just not having enough CPU to handle even basic things. All right, where am I going? Web view. All right. There's a load commit event. Here it is. Okay, so that's fired when a load has occurred or com been committed. Okay, that includes within the current document, which means that if you do click on an anchor tag and it jumps the scroll position, that will trigger load commit, I'm guessing. Navigation within the current document as well as subframe. Possibly. May actually be referring to something different. Maybe referring to what is frame means. Is frame is true if it is the actual page that's getting um, uh, that started to load, if it's false, if it's a, just a sub-resource, so like an image embed that the load committed to. So probably this is our, uh, our, our guy here. So let's, um, we have this logic where we grab the current page based on whoever was emitting the, uh, the event, and we reset some state, turn off live reloading if you're navigating to another domain. We check if it's bookmarked and update the UI accordingly we, okay, this is interesting here. We have some precedent in a way. Um, every site has a zoom that we try to retain in the database so that whenever you navigate away and come back, it has the same zoom. So that's pretty similar to um, what we're doing. So let's start with this. And let's just kind of start by making sure that the load commit event is actually the event we want to listen to. 
So I'm going to, oh, hey Wes, glad you could find an adapter. Um, Tara just got one of the new iPhones, so she's got the same situation. I don't know if some very sick person decided to change the, uh, <laughs> change away from the traditional headphone jack on those headphones. So, all right. So we've got a live watcher on the Electron build. Going to do a reload of the shell window to run the new code. Should open up all of our tabs from before. And there's a breakpoint. Don't know why that's there. Let's keep going. Just, just to reiterate, normally my machine doesn't go this slowly, but the stream is streaming a pretty large screen here, so that seems to be really killing my machine performance. All right, so why are we not seeing any load commit events? We should have seen something. I would assume, but did the builder actually do what it was supposed to do? It didn't. Maybe I refreshed too fast. All right, if we're going to have all this. Try that again. There it is. Okay. So it happens. Happens if you refresh the page, happens on initial load. Probably happens on page events. Let's open up this source code again and find out just exactly when all happens. Uh, I think I can use. Let's start by setting in a link which will go to one of these paragraphs. If I remember right, the ID is now what's used, but it may not be right, maybe a name. So this will give me a link inside of the page, which I can click on to jump to paragraph 50. Okay, so that was right about how to write that and so back and forward on the anchor is actually triggering this event as is just, yeah, so even clicking on an anchor tag inside the page triggers this, which uh, I suppose is fine. Let's also open up, let's add another, well, actually, no, let's do this. Let's add another link uh, this time to the dat.json inside of the uh, archive so that we can test what happens when you go to another page entirely. Again, what we're trying to do is find out when we want to, uh, what event we want to hook into whenever, um, to, to try to record the, the scroll position, right? So we want to have an event, an opportunity to say, okay, the scroll position is at 500 pixels, uh, right now at the time of leaving the page, record that, uh, and then, uh, reset it whenever the page finishes loading but only if it's a refresh event. So, so it fires at what exact point does it fire? Looks like it fires prior to getting away from the page and that's important. Let's check this one more time. Yeah. Okay, so then the next thing to check is, am I going to be able to get out that scroll position and have it be the correct scroll position uh, at this event? All right, I suppose the easiest way to get the scroll position is just to execute JavaScript inside of the web view. And we have a function that inside of, um, inside of Electron that lets us do that. So let me pull up the documentation again. This time we'll just use Chrome so that we don't have to keep reloading it. Not that I actually need to check this documentation because I've run this a couple times. So let's do uh, page dot, I believe, web view el. Mm -hmm. Execute JavaScript, and we're going to 
more or less ask it what your current scroll position is. Uh, and that runs as a, actually, you know, we can test this right here. One of the advantages of all this being HTML and JavaScript is that even the browser itself is a web page, more or less. All this is HTML and JavaScript, so I can use more or less the same tools in the shell window as I can for a normal web page. All right, document dot, well, can't remember, first of all, what is it scroll top? Yep, yeah. five dot scroll So execute JavaScript should return as the value. Well, I thought it was asynchronous. Maybe computer.web JavaScript. Maybe an API difference there. There we go. Okay, and then if I scroll down and do that again, okay, that's not giving me what I wanted. Hmm. Let's open up the actual inspector for the page and see what the scroll top is. Document, nope. Scroll top. Now this is kind of one of the, yeah, what was it? What's the variable for this? Maybe it's... Might be what I want. Yeah, all right, looks like window.scroll y. We're gonna probably find out all kinds of fun things about how difficult it is to implement this. Like what would happen if we had a uh, scrollable element inside the page as opposed to the actual page being scrolled. I'm sure that's not gonna work. I guess you could look for every overflow auto, any element inside the page that has a, it's, a scroll bar and then try to restore each and every one of them. Could do that, but for now I'm just going to do it at the top level uh, page. I don't know if anybody has any idea what I'm referring to there, but for now we'll just see if we can't get this thing to come back at 35. So we have now a way to get the scroll position of the page at the time of the load commit. So let's just dump that code in there real fast. And now the question is, uh, I guess what we need to do is find out if this is a refresh event so that we only handle it if it's a refresh event. Now let's find out if there's an easy way to figure that out. Load commit. Does it tell us anything about where we're going? Looks like the URL may be worth looking at. So let's uh, dump out let's dump out that parameter real fast and see what that tells us. I would assume that it's gonna tell us exactly wherever the page is about to go, including if you're clicking on an anchor link, uh, it'll probably just have the anchor link in there. And if that's the case, we're gonna to have to probably strip off the, the, well, let me think. Yeah, I guess we just do a straight up compare to whatever the current URL is. And if it is equal, then we know it's a refresh event. And that's when we uh, that's when we handle this thing. Can't read property then of undefined. You got a problem, right? Let's get rid of this. And if I click on go to para fifty, yep, as I expected. So let's go back. And if I refresh, do we get what I would expect? Yeah. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the event to the current URL. And uh, if it is equal, we'll consider it a refresh. Uh, but you know what we ought to check is what page.url says. In fact, maybe even more specifically, we have a, it's some kind of fun, uh, so to speak, logic around what URL we're actually on, and if we're actually loading a URL, I think we actually just want to go with get that this URL. All right. Uh, 
so if it's going to be a refresh, grab the current scroll position. Let's make this even more clear. Every once in a while I like to name my conditionals like this just because I am not the only person that works on code that I write. And sometimes that extra readability is helpful. Not everybody's going to agree with me on that. But it's what I like to do. All right, scroll Y. This is asynchronous, which means there may be an interesting timing aspect to this. So we need a place to store the um, console.log. We're going to <laughs> yeah, Wes disagrees with me that naming the conditional makes it more readable. Uh, what can you do? All right. Uh, so I have the scroll Y. I need to put this on the page object somewhere. We're going to add a new variable for tracking it. That variable probably will need to get cleared uh, in other scenarios. Or actually probably what it'll be is, let's say... Um, Dot, uh, let's call it retained scroll y equals zero. And actually that should be set to zero every time. And then if it just so happens that we manage to catch this all right, now let's go up to the object creator for the page and add this new Variable, so let's see, current pages info is probably the right spot for this. There's also a zoom, which is not a bad, it's a page state. Okay, we'll put it there. Uh, all right, and we'll call this retained scroll y zero was the Now this is probably temporary what I'm doing here because uh, oops, because we're going to want to eventually handle backwards and forwards events, not just page refreshes. Um, but for the moment, this will be enough. So now we need to listen for the completed navigation event so that once the page loads, we try to restore the scroll position which is probably going to be on did stop loading or possibly uh, did finish load. So let's take a look at the documentation and see what the difference is between those two. Did finish load, that's when the spinner should stop spinning. And did stop loading <laughs> corresponds to the point in time when the spinner of the page stops spinning. All right, I have no idea what the difference is between those two. What the heck did I do? Why do I have both? I did stop loading. That seems to be the one that we take seriously. And what about undid finish load? Why did I do it that way? Okay. That means there's some kind of difference between the two, and I did not document what it is. Oh, but thank goodness I named that conditional, right? Okay. I'm going to go with this one because this one seems to be the one that I, uh, you know, this seems to be the one that I put more effort into. We got the markdown rendering, the JSON rendering in there. So I guess we're going to want to do anything we do really after any of this stuff, all this good old hacks. So if there is a retain scroll position. Uh, move page. All right. And probably the simplest way to do this, I don't think there's going to be any kind of electron-based API for controlling the scroll position. Um, I suppose I haven't looked yet, but it would be pretty surprising. So I think the simplest way to do it, again, will just be to run exec, ex execute JavaScript inside of the web contents, which will just, you know, 
basically be injecting JS into the page. Not a little, not, not any harm in doing that. Um, but let me just double check real quick and see if there's anything about controlling the scroll position. Doesn't look like it. Uh, so that's what it's going to be, and I'm guessing, if I remember how this sort of stuff works, if I just set it to like thousand, should just move the page. Except I need to grab that reference. No. Okay, so then maybe I need to call window.scroll. And looks like that must be the X parameter, so let's try zero. Okay. Window.scroll it is. Now let's see. Page dot web view el dot get web contents. Actually, we don't need to do the. We can just do it directly. Java script. Notice how Java, how the S in JavaScript is capitalized. I'm sure somebody thought that was a good idea, but that has led to a lot of typos for me. I'll tell you that. And then we're just going to call window dot scroll zero and retain scroll y will be passed in using some good old fashioned template strings. All right, let that filler finish. And then, if we're really lucky, this will actually be done. At least the retaining the uh, scroll position on refresh. So, I don't know. I may be premature to ask for a drum roll, but I think we may have it. So, as soon as this thing finishes building. All right. Let's give it a shot. Scroll down, 34, refresh the page, and <laughs> no dice. All right. Not sure why I didn't log more information, so let's make sure that, first of all, yeah, I did log that. Okay, so that didn't get run. Is refresh must not have come out to true, which is interesting. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so for some reason is refresh. Well, this is not getting run right here. Why might that be? Could be that there's been an error, so I'll add a console.log to see if I just got something wrong there. <laughs> Unless Todd said, and if it worked on the first try, it'd be suspect. Yeah, I suppose so. Can't. Nothing. Nothing's ever that good, right? All right, let's see. Let's test this condition real fast. Console.log. Fresh. Maybe the triple equality is the problem. But that can't be right. Why would the type signature be different? Let's just test that real quick to find out. Pretty sure they're both going to be strings, but I don't know. Maybe there's some kind of like internally, it's like that um, special like DOM string type or something like that. So maybe a strict equality goes wrong. I doubt it, but we can always try that. Those URLs look the same to me. Finished. Refresh the Chrome. Well, is refresh is true, and yet it's not grabbing the value, so that's a problem. Why might that be? This interest. It's t -t -t -t. Huh. Let's make sure I'm not throwing an exception here somehow. Though, if I was, it should have been bubbling somehow. Yeah, this is pretty odd. Log. Scroll y. 35 second rebuild time, that's 
Usually it's seven seconds, but again, this is what that live stream is doing to me. Yeah, it's trying to fetch the scroll Y and just not getting any value. Okay, that's interesting. I wonder if, um, you know, when a, as I understand it, whenever a page transition happens, the... Yeah, okay, so probably the previous JavaScript context is getting deconstructed right when I can make this call, which means before this can actually finish, the page is loading or going you know basically recreating its javascript context and so i'm not getting the data in time which makes this interesting uh right so i guess one option that comes to mind is trying to uh put this um, code that grabs the scroll position um, somewhere else, not in the load commit event, but I could try to put it inside of like the refresh function so that anytime I, I call refresh, I actually get this value before I trigger that behavior, which is not impossible to do. It would mean that a refresh from the, that's triggered programmatically by the page would not get caught. It also doesn't solve back and forward, which would have the probably same results. It's much less elegant because then I have to make sure that I'm catching every possible function call, so if there's more than one way to go back, forward, or refresh, I have to hit all of them and capture this value. It's much better if I could just listen to this one event. Um, okay, let's, let's, before we commit to adding this method to every possible function that could trigger a refresh, let's check the events again and see if there's another event that maybe happens sooner in the process. So something that signals that a load is about to occur but happens earlier. Possibly did start loading, but when does... All right, there's a real fast way to find out. I have on almost all of the, let's see. Yeah, all right, so we're gonna do... Let's just actually take all of these guys. So I'm gonna try to find out when these events fire see if there's any of them that fires sooner than did uh, sooner than load commit probably don't want this one did start loading would be a good one to check will navigate will be a good one to check all right so all these uh, I'm gonna go to each one grab their event names let's see if I can There we go. I'm just going to console.log their event names. And that should give me some information about when these things fire. So wait for that build to finish. Yeah, so Julian's making a good suggestion here that rather than trying to grab this data right when the page is going to refresh, instead we could just listen constantly, track the page value. Not a bad idea. Suppose it's going to... Um, I guess I would have to listen to the scroll event inside the page, which is uh, not awful, but not my preference. I think it would be little better if we could just have this thing. Actually, now that I think of it, we would have to set up some kind of channel for that occurring, which, not constantly. Whenever a page changes, you mean before unload. Oh yeah, no, that's, that's uh, right. So Julian uh, is actually saying, yeah, try to, um, try to capture the value before unload. That's, that's what I'm trying right now more or less, I'm looking at these events that I have available and figuring out which one is before unload e enough for me. But it looks like there's some um, 
yeah, but I'm just not sure that I have a, let's see, okay, so it did start loading, was the first to fire there, and it fired before load commit. Uh, uh, yeah, let me try it on did start load, uh, is that what? Okay, interesting, yeah. So we'll navigate fires very first if you're changing the page. So that's good to know, I guess, in general. But it looks like if you're refreshing, did start loading is the first. And if you're just changing the anchor, did start loading also. Oh, yeah. Huh, load commit. My is refresh logic wasn't any good anyway. Um, yeah, let's try did start loading. Uh, no, your your suggestion is right. It's exactly what I thought at first as well. But if um, but if it looks like these events don't fire soon enough, we'll have to hook into the function calls. So it did start loading is the one we're going to try. So that's right there. Simple enough. Move this over. All right. all these state updates that's fine I suppose let's add this state capture right here and real quick look at the event see what kind of information we get did start loading doesn't say uh, all right, Wes, good seeing you. Um, yeah, just ping me on Twitter. All right. So, I don't know what kind of information we're going to get here. We'll log the event. Let's also log at uh, page.url. And what other attributes could we check? Uh, loading URL. So again, we got to try to figure out if this is going to be a refresh, and if I don't know what URL we're going to and what URL we're coming from, that makes it pretty hard to figure out. So let's just take a quick look at what data the event gives us, and uh, we'll also go ahead and assume it's a refresh so we can see what happens whenever we try to fetch the scroll Y, and if it turns out we don't get the scroll Y fast enough, then did start reloading, there's no point in even trying to make it work. All right. So it should be kind of obvious if you look at this, like um, a lot of how this works is programming against the Electron API, um, which means working with whatever, okay, fetching scroll, this looks promising means we're working with whatever APIs the web platform gives us, Node gives us, and Electron gives us. All right, didn't work. Scroll Y came out to zero, which is kind of interesting, because it means it's actually getting executed, but I guess it got executed after the page reload finished, I guess. Hmm. Get web contents. Is that? Oh, well, that's synchronous. I think we're going to have to do this inside of um, inside of the function calls. Yeah. So Michael's asking if there's changes I need in Electron. Is there a workflow to that? And yeah, it's an upstream project. Um, it's obviously more uh, difficult to uh, to work with there because not only can I not make changes that are just you know useful to me, they have to kind of make sense within Electron. It's also C++ much more complicated code base. So most of the time, if I have a choice, I want to try to make it all work just working off of what Electron gives me. Sometimes that can get a little bit of hacky, um, but uh, it keeps things moving faster. And they give a pretty good tool set, like the ability to execute JavaScript inside of different um, contexts, like inside of the paid web view frame, inside of the show window, inside of the background process. That ends up giving you a fair amount of control 
um, because as you can see, I can extra extract values using whatever web APIs already exist. Um, so it works out all right. It's certainly one way to build a Chrome fork fast, and that's what we really wanted to be able to do with this. Um, at some point, I imagine, if we ever mature enough as a project, we'll probably split from Electron or do something where we're a little further upstream, but that we're a three-person team and only two of us work on the browser directly, and really I'm the main coder on the browser, so most of the Beaker code is written by me, most of the JavaScript, and then most of the um, UI work is by uh, Terra. Uh, and so speed of execution is actually pretty key. Uh, Michael's asking, do I run Beaker from a rebuilt Electron, um, or do we use a bundled version? We use a bundled version. A couple of uh, versions back of Electron, we had our own build that we had to maintain, but it's, there's a lot of infrastructure around the, uh, around the Electron builds. It's way, way easier if we can just use what they publish. Um, and thankfully, they're you know, a really awesome team. Uh, that uh, um, is really responsive to fixing bugs and things like that, so it works out really nicely for us. Okay, Julian is asking, do, what if we did this in two events? One would be a store event before the page unload, you store the scroll position in an object, and the second would be after the page is loaded, loading the scroll position stored in the previous object. So Julian, that's, that's exactly what I was trying to do there. The problem is that um, on the page, the page load events that we have, um, the only way I might spend half a second confirming this, but it looks like the only way that I can get the scroll position is to run JavaScript inside of the uh, web view and basically try to grab that window.scrollY value. And that is exactly what this code right here is trying to do. Problem is that's asynchronous. It doesn't stop the load process to, to run that code. So um, we have a timing problem. By the time this ex uh, code execution happens, the page is reloaded and we are losing the scroll y value. So I need to find another way to extract that value in time. Either I need to pull out the value, yeah, either I need to pull out the value earlier and that's what um, hooking into the refresh function will do for us or I need a synchronous way of pulling out the scroll value. Let's, before we change the approach, why don't we look around and see if there is a synchronous way to get the scroll value. Uh, I doubt it. It's looking like there's nothing about the scroll um, inside the documentation. Do a little Googling and see if anything comes up that way. Doubtful, but you never know. Oh, how about this? <laughs> Somebody has made a package that does exactly... Okay, step one. Always make sure you search to see if somebody has published on NPM exactly what you're trying to do. This is incredible. Wouldn't that just figure? Um, all right, well, let's take a look at how they did it. Man, this really makes my job easier. This may involve something that we can't do, so you never know. Uh, all right, so... Yeah, they got a web view, they run some preload, and then the render JavaScript. Okay, so it looks like they are running the onload inside of the... Let me see, Electron Scroll, Selectors, Browser View, oh, that's, yeah, scroller.add, and then in the preload, you have to run the preload code. Yeah, I just wanted to look at their documentation first. All right, so here is how they add. Okay, so looks like, huh, soft and motion, that's in custom, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's actually, this may be easier to start by looking at their preload code, find out what they have running inside of the page. No, oh, brother, let's see. Dot preload. Okay, so yeah, it looks like what they're doing in this is they register a scroll listener inside the page and send via um, IPC the current scroll position anytime it changes. 
So they're basically what they're doing is setting up a sort of a bi-directional um, messaging channel uh, with every page. And uh, anytime the scroll position change they, changes, they export it, send it to the host. And so then the host is doing uh, this right here, where set up a scroll tracker. And when does the scroll tracker find? That's over here. Okay, so the scroll tracker is watching for forward, backward, set scroll position, get scroll position. So this looks like just a way to track the state of a page, which is pretty straightforward. And then they listen for the events sent from the, uh, yeah, okay, and then on did navigate. And did finish the load. Yeah, all right, so it looks like. Yeah. Huh. Right, okay. So they're having to overload the page calls as well, which is interesting. So Julian is saying it looks like the, we have an answer. The only way is to listen constantly to the scroll position. That's a bit sad, he says. I kind of agree. I'm not totally convinced that's the only way because, I mean, you know, it's possible. We haven't tried it yet, but it's possible that um, we could uh, try to grab the, the value still right before the, uh, right before the actual execution of the events because I can delay the call of actually going forward or going back or reloading. Let's take a look real quick, see if there's any other ways to get the scroll position. Yeah, they're su suggesting you execute JavaScript. Doesn't look like there's a better solution to getting the scroll position. Okay. Well, in that case, let's take a look and see if we can override. Let's start by looking at how we call reload or refresh, which means we should look at the nav bar and see what our refresh button is doing on click reload, which is just calling page.reload as you expect. So then the reload function is defined here. Uh, so as it happens, um, the way all of the page method works kind of wraps everything. It's actually, I don't know if I need to get into all this. There's a lot of accumulated knowledge inside of this implementation. That's all I, I can say about that. But it looks like we already have a wrapper around reload, which is good. Um, let's take a look real quick at the usages of um, reload and make sure we know about all of them. Okay, there's, yeah, there's, if it gets called, so this is, as it happens, um, the handling for if you call reload through like here, which also means that the command uh, R any hotkey will get called through there, which is good. Uh, looks like, yeah, okay. Live reload uses that function. Uh, dats finding, being found on the network uses this function. This is all looking correct. Navbar uses this function. Yeah, okay, this looks good. So the only thing we won't get is programmatic refreshing. Um, so I need to make this asynchronous. Turns out we do need the wrapper. And we're going to and 
let's see. Probably the fastest way to here we go. This is actually going to be pretty straightforward. I have no idea how much delay this will introduce for a refresh. Probably not anything noticeable. I can't imagine that fetching the scroll wall would cause any kind of noticeable delay for the user. As long as it's under, you know, 33 milliseconds, right? That wouldn't even be a frame's worth of uh, time. Of truth. Oh, wait, wrong. Uh, refresh the wrong thing. Huh. Yeah, I think it just worked. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, it totally worked. All right, let's. Uh, okay, interesting. Triggered at the wrong point there. Uh, cool, yeah, thanks for joining, Michael. I uh, appreciate all the feedback and thoughts. Um, you basically saw us almost to the end, but it looks like it's triggering too often, so we got to find out how to deal with that. But we are correctly getting the scroll Y, which is good, and now we just need to only set the scroll Y whenever we are at the tail end of a reload. That's probably all this. I'm not, probably not going to get into the history even today or maybe even for a while because that just gets much more complex to, to track whereas really what I just want is the ability to you know how to say that but it could be a real pain not to have your scroll wide maintained well let's just finish this first uh, retained scroll Y where do we set that right here that's at the end of did stop loading huh we do all this stuff, but really shouldn't be doing it if it's just a navigation inside of the page. So this may be a problem with the broader implementation here. Uh, restoring scroll Y. And we should probably go ahead and zero it out after. So if it turns out that all this code inside of this event handler is getting run just whenever we change the uh, click on an anchor within the page, that's obviously not right. We only want the uh, we only want all these um, actions to be executed on the actual page load, not whenever we're just navigating within the page. So I'm gonna yeah, that'd be really odd if all this was happening just on a just on an anchor click. Would have noticed it by now, I would think, but who knows. Let's start by going to the... Okay, refresh, and... Restore it. Yeah, huh, it's getting cold. How about that? Okay, that's interesting. Just 
surprised that hasn't caused a noticeable bug before. So it looks like what's happening here is on did stop loading gets called even if it's just a anchor navigation. Uh, that is to say, if you click on, um, well, an anchor link, sort of like uh, the one that I got at the top of this page, uh, right here, which actually isn't a page transition. And so any sort of logic around a page transition shouldn't run. For instance, we really don't need to be uh, refetching site information, which is what all this is. And we don't need to be um, running, for instance, like the markdown rendering code or the Java, JSON rendering code or even injecting the CSS. And if that is what's going on, then I think if I um, click this, we should be able to find multiple injections of this CSS. So if I look at the HTML, I've got the injected somewhere, right? HTML background set to 0, 0, 0. Should be in there, but you know, I don't see that. Interesting. All right, what about pre tag? We got menu, body, web kit. No. Huh. You know? Interesting. I honestly don't know what's going on with my code. Let's try to uh, let's read this. Yeah, there's getting run. And yet yeah, doesn't seem to have any effect. Oh, you know what? I'm looking in the wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes it can be kind of complicated or confusing that you have two different web pages more or less active at once. I was trying to look at styles for the page, and I was looking at, it. yeah, okay, that is getting run twice. So I thought, all right, well, we got to unearth a broader bug, and we need to find a way to know to only trigger this sort of some of this logic if it's actually a change to the page. So we need did stop loading. And I don't think it tells us, you know, it does not tell us where we came from, I don't think. I can try logging the event, see what kind of information we get off of it. Let's take a look at the state of a couple of different things. Console.log, e.url, page.url, page.loading, URL, page.url, page I believe is also some state we maintain and just the event in general. Take a look at all this and see if we can't find um, some kind of information that can help us figure out whether or not this is actually a, just an anchor click inside the page. Let me think. I guess in general, if we zero out the uh, restore, uh, the retained um, Y value, then um, that's really all that needs to happen. So having done uh, this right here, we'll actually solve the problem of an anchor click not working correctly anymore, but there's a broader problem now. I happened upon a, a bug that wants to see a bug, got to fix the bug. And that is that bad uh, logic that shouldn't be getting run is getting run whenever An anchor click happens. All right. No information that helps me at all. All right, I'm gonna have to probably log this as an issue and come back to it later. All right, well, let's see if things still work correctly. Yeah. And then if I click on that, it goes to that. But if I refresh down here, 
stays in the same spot. All right, now for the real moment of truth, the thing that got me going on this in the first place. Live reloading. Awesome. That is going to make this a whole lot more fun to develop on, I'll tell you that. Yeah. No, Jillian, thanks for uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for um, offering your your thoughts. We made it. We got the feature. So uh, glad to have you with us. And I'll probably wrap it up in a second anyway. And all right. So let's get rid of any sort of debugging I got. Yes, and yeah, and fine, and fine, and fine, and yes. Simple patch, pretty straightforward. Um, guess I'm going to commit this and we'll call it a day. Uh, let's see. Actually, let me do a little more testing, make sure nothing else is funny about this. Like, let's go to. happening yet. If I click learn more here, what happens? Takes us to the top as you'd expect. If I scroll down, refresh. How's it go? Great. Awesome. We'll just have to get backwards and forwards done in a little bit later. Alright, thanks everybody. I'm going to call out a stream. Have a good one, and I'll see you around.